Wow, what do you know? It's time for the Pocket Knife Show. Hey, it's Mike on the mic again for another episode of the Pocket Knife Podcast. I saw a tiny praying mantis while running the other day. It was nothing like the four or five inch monstrosity hanging out above the door of the school where I coach on this year's first day of classes. I thought this itty bitty bug was a blade of grass on the street, but no, it was a living creature. I looked at it and with a smile remembered the great terror I felt when I saw these perfectly harmless, to humans, bugs as a kid. Seriously, most people are afraid of spiders or snakes or sharks. I was frightened by a quirky bug with big eyes and strangely bent appendages. And no, I did not watch the sci-fi classic, The Deadly Mantis, in my elementary years. I think I'd like to watch it now, but as a fearful third grader, a Godzilla-sized bug would have triggered a sleepless night or two or three. I wonder if I'd have had nightmares about Mothra if I'd been introduced to her pre-adult life. Hmm. Hitchcock's The Bird scared the living daylights out of me as a middle schooler. I'm still wary of seagulls and other potentially dangerous birds like Mississippi kites or emus. Sparrows are okay. God's got his eye on them, after all. Psalm 148 begins, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you brightest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. And it continues, verse 7, Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. What is it in God's creation, scary or harmless, that amazes you? Is it the waves crashing against the rocks on the Oregon coast? Is it the soaring red rock arches and hoodoos in southern Utah? What in this world stuns you? Is it the lizards which thrive in the hostile desert? Is it the massive expanse of blue above you dotted with fluffy white clouds? What in your life makes you praise? Is it the pulse you feel in your chest at the end of a hard workout? Is it the feel of dirt squishing between your fingers as you plant daisies and dahlias? I remember a wow moment I experienced a few years back while sitting on the deck of a house in the mountains. The sun was shining, the sky was nearly cloudless, the temperature was pleasant, the humidity, 2%. That never happens in Kansas. The stillness could almost be tasted. Then came a hum. A tiny iridescent hummingbird darted into view. It hovered just four feet away. It shifted position but stayed in view. The buzz of its tiny wings was loud. This creature flitted around a few more times and then it was gone. God's magnificent power and glory is shown in such things. His creativity is on display every minute of every day. Sometimes we see it far more often. His wonders are unseen by human eyes. Billions of critters, large and small, doing what they were designed to do. God sees, and I think, despite the effects of the fall, he still says, It is good. It is very good. Psalm 104.31 May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. And may we also rejoice. It's that I know we've come to the end of the show. See you next time.